So today I want to talk about choropleth maps and basically an art map that I call this graduated color. It's a common rendering type that's used for quantitative, quantitative information. Basically you take these different polygons that you see here, you take a quantitative information attribute field and you start displaying them within color so you can start looking at patterns. And so in order to do this you want to go into the layer properties by right clicking the data set. And today's data set that we're looking at is the FEMA presidential declaration zones. And so this is everywhere where a natural disaster has been declared. And as you can see, if I uh, just, well, I guess quickly, let's look at here at the attribute table. If I look at the attribute table, I have a lot of very good information here, including number of different types of disasters that have taken place. But when I look at the map itself, you can see it's pretty boring because it's just a, one single color. So what we want to do is tie the colors that we see here associated with the numbers that we're finding here in the attribute table. And again, ESRI likes calling this the graduated color. And so in normally we would call this a choropleth map. And so if I go here to properties and look under the symbology tab for the layers, I can see that right now the feature is being shown as one single symbol. What I can do is I can change this over into a quantity mode. And then here we can kind of see what we're going to get right here in this little corner. But that's what we want to do. So I'm going to choose here under the value, for example, I'm going to choose total declaration. So I want to see based off how many declarations have taken place in the in the United States, and presidential declarations of a disaster zone, what's the what's the, fr the frequency like in distribution. And so if I hit apply here, you can see that it's defaulting into five feature classes, uh, five different classes, and it's using the classifications method called natural breaks and you know this can give me kind of, a, of an idea of what's going on here within the map but questions that I want to ask myself now is how many breaks do I want to have number one and number two uh, what kind of classification system do I want to use so if I go here and I say for example changes to three breaks I'm gonna actually get a very different uh, uh, distribution of colors here and I can see okay maybe I can say oh this is lots of disasters not so many okay but if I switch it over to more breaks and I'm still I'm sticking with the natural breaks method here um, I can see the distribution will look a little bit different so depending on what I choose here I really could be misleading our map reader so it's really you have to be careful about how you choose first of all the number of classes but then secondly even the uh, the where the breaks go so in order to change it in a more finite way, you, you want to go into a cl the classification and click on classify. This brings up the next window. This window here, you can see that right now I have it set to seven classes, but I can choose different classes. But also I can choose different uh, classification methods. So one option is to choose equal interval, which is going to break it down into equal intervals depending on how many classes that you choose here. So for example, if I choose here four, it's four equal intervals going on here. These are all going to be equal sized subranges. Uh, defined interval is a little bit different because it's going to let you choose an interval size. And so here I can say I want to have a break for every 10, for example, uh, units of every 10 disasters. And then it's going to choose the number of classes based off of that. And so you can see here I have 10, 20, and 30 based off of the defined interval. The quantiles is a little bit different because it separates it based off of uh, putting the equal number of uh, features within each class. So you can see here, for example, this everything under seven is going to be a quantile versus versus uh, number equal number of classes here between zero and seven as as seven and twelve and as twelve and twenty nine. If I switch this to, for example, uh, to four equal classes. These can be like in quarters, 25% of the data is here, 25%, 25%, 25%. The natural breaks method is going to look for pauses in the data set that kind of uh, look, <clears throat> look like natural groupings. And so if you look here, these we say are visually similar. The, and this is the default method that's, current, that's, that's typically used. It's not, and there's nothing wrong with it, it's pretty good. And so the next one would be a geometric interval. And so if I check that out, I choose here, again, you choose your number of classes. You can see here that geometric intervals 
create kind of uh, they use an algorithm which looks at coefficients and kind of minimizes the sum of squares for each group. So it kind of makes this natural grouping that takes place uh, based off of uh, different types of regression. It basically wants to make each group have uh, have this to be fairly uh, consistent whenever you look at the different coefficients. And then we have here a standard deviation where it's going to look at the, the interval size being the standard deviation. And if I choose like for example one standard deviation, it's going to break that down. And you know this will really work good for normally distributed data sets. The final method is a manual method where you choose your own break. So you can see here how I can change this and move this around however way I want. Uh, one thing I kind of like doing is going and choosing natural breaks, but then switch that over to manual and kind of make the breaks a little bit better. So whenever you want to say here, for example, between 9 and 10 doesn't change the break at all because the next values are an 11. There's not really a 10 value. So I can go here and change this break value to a 10 without manipulating the class so much. Um, but the problem is you have to be careful here because you could end up changing data sets, changing these classifications a little bit. Another one is that if I right click here, I could delete a break and just get rid of it. Or I can always right click and insert a break. Um, here, for example, at 16, maybe I switch that over to 15. When I switch that to 15, you can see that it's still falling in between data sets. But what is advantage here is that the numbers that are showing up here are showing up as uh, even kind of even numbers that make more sense. Um, here at 20, I can see that I am changing my data set because before this used to be in this class, now it's popped over to this class. And so the question is, how much of a manipulation is that in the data set? That's what you have to be careful about. Whenever I hit OK, that's going to have this breakdown here. And one thing that I usually like to do is I like to separate out zero because zero is a whole different subs, uh, a whole different meaning. Um, not having any uh, natural disaster, for example, in this case, has a big implication to our data set. So I like to insert in a break here right at zero. And you can see how it shows up there at zero. Again, I just right clicked and I said insert break. Here I can delete it, I can bring it back in, insert. And now you can see here I have zero. And so, for example, when I start choosing the color scheme, I want to start thinking about changing this into something that makes sense color wise. Uh, so if I can choose, for example, uh, blue for kind of a safe, yellow, red. This would be kind of like uh, maybe something that's, that's uh, kind of shows the, uh, <clears throat> the information in a natural way. And then whenever I go here to labeling, I can start thinking about uh, even this zero, changing it to none. Uh, these kind of things can help out the map reader understand uh, a little bit easier what's going on in the data set. Another one here is I can change this and I can say 21 or more, um, which can also be another way to get, and you can see how now the labels are all within these types of numbers. I'd be careful about changing number here. You never want to make this less than 29 because if you do that, it's going to end up uh, making it have, uh, end up losing data. Now if I go ahead and hit apply, you can see how this comes out. And so I can start seeing how I'm getting a different kind of map popping together. Um, another thing I can think about doing is uh, being very careful about how I map the borders around the different colors. You can see how without those borders or with those thick borders on there, a lot of this information here is lost and kind of just like a gray area. So I can go through here and if I can double click each symbol selector, I can come through and start changing these around. And uh, one thing is either reducing the outline width, or even in some cases, what I like to do is either get rid of the outline width. That could be one of the options. So if I get rid of the outline width completely, you can see what happens here is that basically end up losing those borders of the county lines. In some cases, that can be okay if people aren't really looking at the map to see county lines. And so, for example, if I go through here and start getting rid of all of them, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. But you can see how it becomes kind of like a sea of just green and blue. Another option is that you choose a less obtrusive color like gray. Maybe go with the white color and then go with as small of a line as you can go with and then see how that looks instead. And sometimes I feel like the white colors can look a little bit better. 
Um, here I can go with no color even, um, but still that, oh sorry, that's not what I want. I went down here in the outline color. I think I want to experiment with this, but let's see what happens. If I say here no color in point 0.1, so it doesn't do anything, but if I go here and then add in that white color, and let's try point 0.01 and see if that makes anything smaller. And so it doesn't really make it that much thinner, but still the white might be a little bit more of a cleaner look. The problem is, is that once you start looking out over here, it starts becoming just a real mess. And so, you know, that's the that's one of the issues that can come come about. So let's just go with no, none. I'm going to go with none, but you know, of course, this is all uh, up to um, to opinion what you want to choose it as. But you can go through and choose each one individually here, and then get rid of the outline widths and get a kind of idea of what a map could look like. And then when you start putting this together, you can start saying, okay, this is this is looking good or bad or whatever. And so that's something to think about. Um, of course, whenever you start uh, making your maps, remember this is, uh, you know, always try to use good, uh, good map form. Um, United States often, I would say, looks better with the landscape. So converting that over to a landscape format. <clears throat> Could make uh, make it look a little bit nicer. Um, another thing I like doing is uh, putting Alaska and Hawaii by itself um, because in this case you can see how Hawaii gets kind of bent out of shape. Alaska as well, and so um, I like to go in and zoom in on just the contiguous United States for the main part of the map, and then afterwards um, copying the whole data frame and then um, pasting in the data frame. That allows me to have two of the same exact data frames that keeps the uh, colors the same. And so then afterwards I can like go and make a uh, smaller version of the map where I zoom in on Alaska instead. I don't know why this is, oh wait, I copied the, the layer itself. Um, what I need to do is copy the data, whole data frame and then paste the whole data frame. This should work. Typically it works. Maybe it doesn't want to do it this time. Let's try it again. I selected the data frame, copy and paste. Okay, there it goes, finally. And so I can see here now, uh, let me clear that guideline. Um, now you can see how I have two data frames, uh, but that's what's cool about it is that it keeps everything the same. So even though I just switched it up on one, the color schemes and everything are still the same. And so now I can go in and make that insert map of just Alaska. If I activate that data frame and switch back over into ArcMap, that can give me the give me the ability to um, <clears throat> to work in data view, which is a little bit easier to work with and uh, let me look at Alaska. Remember one of the things to keep in mind is that uh, many times it's good to work with a coordinate system that is uh, good for Alaska in its own case. So then if I switch that over to Alaska, you can see it looks much better um, just on Alaska and just zoom in on it itself. And whenever I switch back over, you can see here now I have Alaska hanging out here in the corner. Um, right now there's a big black bar around Alaska. I can get rid of that simply by going over to the properties and looking at the frame itself and just saying none. That gets that rid of that and then um, let me just refresh that. <clears throat> and then I get to the exact same thing for um, Hawaii. So let's see, let me just see if I paste this again what happens. Yes, there we go. And then again, activate this one switch over to its data view and then zoom out to uh, Hawaii. Again, you see Hawaii is up on its side because again, the projection should be uh, in a projection that is good for Hawaii. So I like Hawaii Albers equal area conic. So if I do that, Hawaii now is looking like it's supposed to. I zoom in on Hawaii and I flip back over into my data frame and that gives me a second dairy one for Hawaii, which I can change here the name, just so I can keep things uh, straight. Remember these names here, the map reader never actually sees it. It's more just up for you. 
and then I can go ahead and make this fit here in the corner make it smaller um, go ahead and switch back over to that data view where I can zoom in on just Hawaii and also um, kill that black frame around it so I go to frame and just go ahead and get rid of that and then let's say um, insert in a legend and so I'm going to go ahead and just add that legend in I'm just adding in different map elements for fun you can add what you want <clears throat> to finish off the map um, just one thing that I don't usually like in the maps are all these different uh, things that show up here. Um, I don't usually like the word legend unless it's uh, just saying what the legend is really, so I like getting rid of that. But if I go into items and click on style, I want to even change out the different things that show up. And so if I go here in general, I could take off things like the headings, that's what's going on here, or layer names. Once I get rid of all that, I need here a pretty nice looking uh, scale bar. Oh, sorry, uh, legend bar. I would not include a scale bar on this map because there's not really any main, main point in doing that. And so I would just leave that off. But I would include a um, title. I think that is, oh sorry, it's 2015, so I should change, don't want to mislead, so let's change that to 2015. Remember here in the symbols, that's where I can change the different fonts and so forth. I usually try to stay away from the, the uh, <clears throat> default fonts. At the same time, you don't want to choose these kind of crazy looking fonts as well. And so you want to be careful about that in general. Um, is choosing a font that's not distracting but that you know maybe has a little bit of something different so it's not always the exact same thing another thing that you can think about doing is not using full black but using uh, one of these uh, darker grays which has pretty much the same impact as having black but looks a little bit uh, cleaner on the map itself so anyways I'm gonna call this map done and uh, you can feel free to change yours however way you want but you get an idea of how to work with chloropleth maps and uh, the different uh, variations of classifications that happen there